Hello viewers, myself Savik Sen, let's see what is psychology. Psychology is also written with this symbol. You can also write psychology with this symbol. It is internationally as well as nationally acceptable in universities. Now, psychology is defined as scientific study of behavior and mental processes. Scientific study of behavior and mental processes. So obviously, it tries to scientifically study the actions that we do, the behaviors, the overt behaviors, the behaviors which can be done physically. And there are certain behaviors which we cannot do physically, but we do it in our imaginations. We do it in our, in our wishes. We do it in our mind, inside our mind. For example, when you plan your activities, it is a covert behavior. The planning is being done inside the mind. It is not visible to an outsider. So, psychology not only attempts to study the overt behaviors which are visible, which are observable, but also the covert behavior that take place inside the mind. Isn't it? Often behaviors which are performed mentally eventually get translated behaviorally physically. So, the blueprint is created inside the mind and execution is done by the body, right? Psychology attempts to study both of them. So, basically the object of study of psychology is human behavior. And when we talk of human behavior, we can always talk of two forms of behavior. Two forms of behavior. Your behavior may be a reaction or it may be a proaction. It can either be a reaction given to a stimulus in the environment or it can be a proaction in absence of any stimulus in the environment. You do it proactively. So, when you are reacting to something, that means you are giving a reaction to a stimulus. present in the environment. Okay. For example, as the teacher enters the class, you react by wishing the teacher, good morning sir, good morning ma'am and so on. That is the reaction. Had the teacher not entered the class, if the teacher has not walked into the class, there is no reason for you to wish somebody, right? And your behaviors may also be proaction. When your behaviors are proaction, Definitely, it is being driven by a motive. It may be driven by a desire. It may be driven by an expectation. Or it simply might be a habit. A habit can predispose you to act in a certain way. Hmm? So, psychology attempts to study both the reactions as well as proactions. Okay? Now, if I talk about the nature of the subject, the subject originates from the ancient wisdom rooted in philosophy. Hmm? The ancient wisdom as old as Srimad Bhagavad Gita, that is considered to be the origin of psychology, right? Because Gita is all about karma and karma in English is behavior. So, the history of psychology is rooted in philosophy, right? It has a long history as well as a long past, right? However, this subject was studied scientifically by the Western world in such a manner that the subject of philosophy that was the root of psychology was investigated through a plethora of experimentations inside the labs 
the behaviors which cannot be observed or experimented inside the labs they were studied in real life settings which are called field studies right and so much of research so much of experimentation so much of studies have taken place in psychology so much of case studies have arrived in psychology that if i examine the position of the subject in the bipolar com, you know continuum of sciences so suppose this is a bipolar continuum of sciences and i keep the normative sciences in one end and the pure sciences on the other then let us examine the position of psychology within these two poles apart normative sciences are those that deal with basic questions of life like what one should do what one is ought to do hmm? so subjects like metaphysics philosophy spirituality they lie in this end normative sciences pure sciences are those which simply study phenomena which are observable which are measurable which are quantifiable right so something that cannot be observed something that cannot be evidenced they don't believe in the existence of those phenomena so these are empirical in nature so pure sciences will include physics chemistry and so on now if we examine the position of psychology within the continuum of sciences we find it located closer to pure science as compared to normative science although it's it originates in philosophy but eventually because of rampant and rigorous experimentation psychology has acquired the status of a pseudo science if not a pure science now this brings a mood of delight to me to inform you that because of being within the continuum psychology has lot to offer to student who come from science background at the same time students who come from humanity background why because it has the blend of both the opposite poles this is roughly the nature of the subject right now if i talk about the domains of psychology psychology at university level psychology at upsc level can be categorized into certain structures hmm? for example there will be some chapters in psychology that qualified to be called general psychology so the topics you know i'll give you some examples like personality personality is your behavioral signature it is your identity the way you appear to others the way people know you what kind of personality are you okay so people try to perceive certain traits inside you and make a judgment and impression about you depending upon your personality now this belongs to general psychology likewise development of human behavior is a topic of general psychology in development of human behavior we investigate the role of nature versus nurture in shaping our behavior in development of our behavior so it comprises of several types of development in human life for example what is the role of genes and what is the role of learning in development of your say cognitive abilities cognitive development development of mind the power of mind how do you process information how accurately you process information moral development physical development linguistic development and so on so development of human behavior then you know this general psychology will also include topics like consciousness 
dreams, sleep. Now students who do not have any background in psychology think that sleep me kya hai? Sleep is sleep. Well, no, you have several types of sleep, and every night you pass through different phases of sleep. Hmm? Did you realize so far? You do that every day. And if you want to know, you can get yourself investigated in a sleep lab where you can go and retire for a night or two, and they will give you the recordings of electroocularograph, electroencephalograph. You will be fitted with a variety of machines, and they will give you the recordings that how you pass from one stage of sleep to another. Okay, hypnosis and so on, investigated scientifically. So, roughly, these will be the topics of general psychology. Then another unit of psychology will comprise of cognitive psychology. Cognitive psychology will include topics like language and communication, so we will again investigate the role of genes and role of learning in development of language. Can language be taught after a certain age? If a person is not exposed to any verbal community up to a particular age, you know, say onset of puberty, and after which he comes and intermingles with human community. For example, the feral child, feral child who is recovered from forest, say Tarzan. Can you teach language to Tarzan? If you recover him from the forest after the age of, say, 12, 13 years, is it possible? Well, the answer is no, it's not possible. So, there is a particular period during which language must be acquired. So, it is partly learned and it is partly product of maturation. We will investigate all these issues in language and communication. Then, you have the topic of thinking and problem solving. How do we think and how do we solve problems? What are the factors which affect our problem solving abilities? The topic of intelligence and aptitude. In this topic, we also learn about emotional intelligence and creativity. Okay. We study about IQ, intelligence quotient, how does it develop and what happens when it does not develop right? Thinking, problem solving. Then we also investigate the mental processes as I told in the very definition mental processes like learning. How do we learn different types of behavior? Memory. So, is memory a kind of system, a computer, a RAM fitted inside the brain? Well, yes, that is studied by multi-store model of memory, who believes that our memory is nothing but three discrete units, sensory register, STM, short term memory, followed by long term memory, which is permanent memory. And there is another camp in psychology, which believes that no memory is not something which is inbuilt, but it has to be built by ourselves through our experiences. So it is built by processing of information. We call it levels of processing approach. Okay. So we will investigate memory and because we will investigate memory, we will also investigate forgetting. What leads to forgetting? Can we forget everything completely? Is it partial? Is it complete? And if we understand the dynamics of forgetting, then it is possible for a student of psychology to reduce the amount of forgetting, which is very much necessary for this exam, isn't it? So, in the topic of memory, we will deal with all these phenomena. Hmm? Then we also have the topic of sensation, attention, and perception. Sensation is the function of body. Our body is nothing but a sensing device. It is made up of five sense organs. 
eye for sight, ears for hearing, tongue for tasting, nose for smelling, skin for touching, you know. So, our body is made up of these five senses and these five sense organs have only one job to do and that is to intercept the stimulus energies in the environment. So, what your eyes does is just it captures the wavelengths which are reflected from various objects and various people. So, light of different wavelengths are intercepted by your retinas, they do not carry any meaning. These wavelengths, these energies, this light energy or sound energy is sent to the brain where it is processed meaningfully, where it is interpreted meaningfully, where it is understood meaningfully, which is the job of your mind, the process being known as perception. So, the body senses and the mind makes sense out of those raw sensations. So, when you see me, you do not, your eyes do not understand what they see. They simply capture the light energy reflected from my body. It is your mind which creates a visual image and it compares the visual image with various images saved in the memory, pre-existing memory and the best match comes with Sovik Sen and then you recognize me meaningfully that okay, yes, he is Sovik Sen, our probable teacher for psychology, right. So, sensation, attention, perception and likewise. So, these will be part of cognitive psychology and then we have abnormal psychology. Psychology of mental disorders, and mental health. So, there are two issues. What are different types of mental disorders? How do they, how do people get those disorders? What are the causes? What is the etiology of this disorder? What are the symptoms and what are the treatments? So, as I said that what we see, what we hear, they do not make any sense in themselves. They do not carry any meaning in themselves. The meaning is attached by our end. When we attach a meaning to certain things which we experience, the process is known as perception. Now, when our perceptions get distorted, our reactions also get distorted because we react according to what we understand in the situation. Two people give different reactions in the same circumstance. Why? Because they perceive the circumstance differently. So, what happens when your perceptual abilities get distorted, you develop a variety of mental disorders which are studied under abnormal psychology. Okay? So, it is a part of clinical psychology more appropriately. So, abnormal psychology comprises of two sections. One is clinical, dealing with all types of mental disorders and another is called positive psychology which developed in 1960, you know, recent development. So, positive psychology is not interested in studying the abnormal behavior. Positive psychology is more interested in making people's life happier than before. So, clinical psychology would tell you how to absorb greater stresses in life. Positive psychology will tell you how to get rid of stresses. So, it tries to make a healthy person healthier. So, this is another domain of psychology and then finally, you know, we have the social psychology. Social psychology comprise of study of human behavior within the social context. For example, the topics included here are attitude, values and interest. Okay. gender psychology, how do people acquire gender identity, how do people behave in a stereotypical manner, how many forms of gender discrimination exist in India and across the world and how to overcome them, hmm? how to manage diversity. Then you have community psychology. The well-being of an individual is embedded within the well-being of the community in which he lives. So, 
so how peaceful i live my life what kind of peace of mind i carry how i wake up in the morning and go to the bed in the night largely depends upon who is my neighbor if my neighbor is a cooperative person if he is friendly i live in total peace of mind but if he is quarrelsome if he is nagging if he is complaining that gives me a reason not to be mentally healthy right so welfare of an individual is nested within the welfare of community and how to build this social capital this community to ensure happiness well being in the life of individual community psychology happens to be a very important part of social psychology and then we have problems of social integration and the biggest problem is the division that people have in mind which is known as prejudice whether it is caste prejudice or it is religious prejudice or it is regional prejudice there are several types of prejudice so we will see what are the causes of prejudice what are the types of prejudice at what levels they can manifest themselves and what are the remedies to treat this prejudice right and finally we have applied psychology now all the topics which i discussed before this page they will be found throughout paper 1 and first four chapters of paper 2 i repeat general psychology cognitive psychology abnormal psychology all these topics will form part of paper 1 whole paper 1 and the first four chapters of paper 2 after which after which following which another 10 chapters in psychology are purely applied in nature so whatever concepts theories researches you have learned in the previous sections you need to apply them here and there lies your creativity right now in applied psychology topics included are some of the important topics are like psychology of terrorism so who is a terrorist anybody can kill but anybody who kills cannot qualify to be a terrorist isn't it so to define a person as a terrorist there must be two qualifications first is he must be a part of a group that commits indiscriminate violence now you may argue that well even the drug cartels members of drug cartels are also part of group and they also commit indiscriminate violence so can they be called terrorist no they can't because the second qualification is this group should be driven by an ideology and the ideology may be weird but there should be an ideology and the most common ideology that drives a terrorist activity is narrative of victimhood right so what is the psychology of a terrorist why one becomes a terrorist are some people naturally predisposed to become terrorist we investigate these questions from an individual point of view in psychology so we do not get into the legal matters we just investigate them from psychological point of view military psychology so wars are not won with guns history has been witness most of the wars have been won with psychological warfare which is called propaganda whether it be alexander whether it be chengiz khan who never got defeated whether it be hitler hitler had a altogether ministry propaganda ministry led by joseph gobel okay whether it be churchill so no wars can be won without psychological warfare okay so we investigate all those psychological warfare and then we also know that military is a very stressful job our soldiers and their families lead lead a very stressful life so they need psychological counseling time to time to overcome the combat stress reactions okay so we deal with all of these then psychology of education how to make the transfer of training from the teacher to the learner more effective so i deliver the same lecture to the whole class why is it so that somebody turns out to be a topper and somebody turns out to be a failure the lecture was same for all so 
so there are many intermediate factors that come in between there are many intermediate factors that come in between which do not let complete transfer of training from the teacher to the taught so what are those intermediate factors it can be motivation motivational deficit it can be lack of self determination it can be lack of curiosity to learn it can be lack of interest etc etc so we investigate all these aspects in educational psychology applied obviously how to improve the memory of the student you will always already carry the concept from memory chapter how to make learning effective you already know it from the learning chapter so you will apply the concepts acquired in the previous chapters to deal with these sections environmental psychology for example okay how can the arrangement of furnitures in a room change the pattern of communication between the members occupying the chairs members occupying the chairs will change the communication pattern you know how does crowding affect people's behavior what is bystander effect we are not likely to get help in presence of many helpers we are more likely to get help in presence of few helpers bystander effect why because when there are many people around when there are many helpers around there is diffusion of responsibility and no one comes forward so we will investigate the role of crowding the role of pollution on mental and physical functioning human behavior and likewise now apart from these topics a topic that is indispensable in psychology without which you cannot expect a very high score is the topic of research method and here i would like to break some myth this chapter of research method does not includes any kind of mathematics or mathematical conclusion calculation it just includes the logic why some researches are done inside the lab and why some researches are done outside the lab for example if i want to know what is the impact of loud noise on your task performance i can create an artificial setup i can subject you to loud noise i can expose you to loud noise and see your performance whether it improves or it declines okay and i can come at a conclusion but if i want to see what is the impact of parental divorce on academic performance of child i cannot get the parents divorced that is beyond my power beyond my capacity so there i need a sample which is already divorced for comparison with the intact parents right so research method is just logical it has nothing to do with statistics or any statistical analysis okay now i hope i was able to present the idea about what is the nature of the subject and now i will come to some common questions that come to me through the students hmm? one of the potent question is is it scoring well my answer is it is not it is not scoring unless you make it scoring so it's just like saying if you want to make the omelet you need to break some eggs so what can make the subject scoring there are only two things which can make the subject scoring psychology is a scientific subject you should understand it is more a pseudo science so focused answering is the hallmark to get good scores in psychology so some students have the habit of writing wrong long introduction long conclusion beating around the bush here and there and not coming to the point no this is not welcome in psychology in india itself some universities offer msc degree bsc degree in psychology and across the world it is considered as bsc and msc degree so in a scientific subject it is demand that your answer should be focused you have to answer the question you don't have to show your creative writing okay so first is focused answering because the answers will not allow you to write more than 200 words and 200 means 200 okay <coughs> and second the topic selection which are the questions you are choosing to answer which are those topics which you are choosing to answer so if you want to score 
a good marks in psychology, the topics which are indispensable are research method, abnormal, sensation, attention, perception, and any topic that belongs to the domain of applied psychology. If you have attempted the questions from these areas, I do not have a single iota of doubt that you will score higher than 60 percent, which is our objective, I guess, to become an IAS officer, is not it? And I hope that you are not aspiring for 90 percent marks. That could happen in schools, colleges, right? UPSC mesa nahi hota. Okay. So, that is the scoring aspect. Now, another question that comes to me, sir, what is the selection ratio? Well, if I take all the subjects, if I take all the subjects, if I remember properly from UPSC side, the selection ratio ranges between 9 to 12. Least is 9 from any subject and highest is 12. I will not name any subject, but psychology's rank is in 11 within the gamut of 9 to 12. So, when it comes to selection ratio, all subjects are equally rewarding. And if you are beginning or choosing an option, this question should not come to your mind. It will not happen by itself. You have to make it happen, right? Then the third question, sir, do we need a background in psychology to choose the subject? Very valid question. Now, I will give you two simple examples, okay? I received both kind of students. Some students come with background and some come without background. Okay? Now, the person who has come with a background in psychology, maybe a graduation, a post graduation psychology. Let us be you know, honest enough to admit that the subjects that we have learnt in our graduations and post graduations, we have developed clarity in certain chapters and we are left with doubts in certain others. All of us have to admit that we are not perfect in our graduation subject or post graduation subject. Not all areas enjoy equal amount of command and clarity. There is clarity in certain areas and there are doubts in certain areas. So, students who come with a background, they come with clarity that is good in certain areas and they also come with doubts in certain areas. This is for students who come with background. They are not only coming with clarity, they are also carrying long pending doubts. People without background come to me with a blank mind, we call it tabula rasa, a blank board, nothing has been written over it. So, they do not have clarity over the subject, but they do not have doubt either. The best part is they do not have any doubt either. So, they also stand equal chance just like people with background wherein they allow me to write something on this tabula rasa. So, my advice is, if you want to join the course of psychology at Drishti with us, come with an open mind, right? Come with an open mind. So, background is not a necessary precondition. It can be a desirable condition, but it is not a necessary precondition. Anybody from any background, as I said, psychology has to offer students who come from science background as well as students who come from humanity background. But yes, the writing skill must be focused, okay? And now let me tell you the way we are going to deliver the course. The total number of hours required in the classroom is 200 hours plus minus 10. The classes shall be held from Monday to Saturday with a duration of two and a half hours 
each. So this brings the number of lectures roughly to roughly somewhere between 80 to 90 plus minus 10. Okay. So you can roughly count it is a four months course, roughly four months course. The study material will be provided for every topic and this study material which I have made, it is not my own creation of mind, it is simply the best compilation which I could have done for you so that you do not have to break your head running across, you know, running across pillar to post for notes, material or books because the books are mostly western, they are very expensive. So, just to make them available to the student, whatever good I found in any book, I just took it from there and compiled a matter for you. So, the material and your classroom presence will be sufficient. I repeat students, matter will not matter. Your presence in the class will matter. It will make all the difference. Okay. So, that is regard study material. Uh, the test will be integral part of the course. So, as the lectures progress, as the lectures and the topics advance, we will conduct intermittent test. There would be six divided test as we progress through the course. So, after completion of four or five topics which are interrelated in each other, with each other, we will conduct a test. And there will be two composite tests for paper 1 and paper 2 separately towards the end. Okay. So, test will be integrated with the progress of the course. Okay. As in when we complete the topics, we keep the test. Okay. And another thing that I would like to inform the students about psychology, some students ask me, sir, to what extent it will be useful in other areas, hmm? utility. Well, apart from being an commonsensical and catchy, interesting, optional subject, psychology also helps you in the paper of ethics, 60 percent of questions and topics coincide with topics of ethics. May it be values, may it be attitude, may it be emotional intelligence, may it be social influence, may it be persuasion, there is psychology into it, right. So, 60 percent it will be helpful in ethics. Second, it will also add to your essay performance. Now, you may ask how will it add to our essay performance, definitely. In essay generally, we try to see things from different perspectives. Hmm? The same phenomena, the same issue is examined from different perspectives. For example, the sociological perspective over some issue. say the economic perspective over the same issue. What are the social implications? What are the economic implications? Say what are the political implications? Hmm? Political perspective. Psychology will add another perspective which is called psychological perspective that operates at individual level. Secondly, it will definitely enhance your language being a western subject. It will develop more command in English language. You will have a better authority in the language. And thirdly, it may also help you a bit in your soft skills in interview. So, these are, this is a complete package of psychology and this is the information which I wish to share with you. If I have missed on some part, then please visit us, come to us in the final orientation session. With this, I conclude and thank you for listening to me patiently. Thank you.